Okay, we've said it several times. You need to have a complex password to be taken seriously. So, what is a complex password? First of all, you need to have a couple requirements. First, uppercase and lowercase letters. Second, numbers. And third, special characters, such as the pound sign or the asterisk. That will make a complex password, but you also want to have password length. And the, the length of the password is really going to depend on the scenario. Different organizations will want different length passwords. It could be 8 characters, or 10, or 12, or 14, or even 15. And in you know highly confidential uh, scenarios, I recommend 15 characters or more. And there's various reasons for that but uh, we can get into that a little bit later. For now, what I wanna show is how to change the password in Windows and in Mac OS X, and then how to check your password online to see if it is complex and powerful enough that it won't be cracked. Now, first of all, in Windows, uh, we can change the password, go to Control Panel, All Control Panel Items, User Accounts, and then go to Change Your Password. If we click that link, we can make the new password here. And, uh, you know, again, you want this to be complex. Different versions of Windows will be slightly different, but this is the basic navigation for that. Now you can also do this in the command line and you wanna be an administrator and you'd use the net user command and then you type in the name of the user account space and the new password that you wanna use. So for example, uh, one of my favorites for testing purposes is Marquis de Sade and that's gonna be capital M-A-R-Q-U uh, number one, S, capital D number three, capital S number zero, and the lowercase d. So a little play on words there, but notice that by default, this password has been typed in clear text and everybody can see it. Now you can modify this. There's ways to modify this so that it just shows asterisks, but that's really what you want if uh, you know, you're working in a system. You want it to show asterisks and not exactly what you're typing, just in case there's a shoulder surfer nearby. So if we press enter here, it'll say the command completed successfully. Boom, done. So that's how we would modify this in Windows. Now, if you're using uh, a Mac, or if you're in a Linux system, you could do it in the terminal. And for the Mac specifically, we can do that within the settings, the system preferences. And we go in there and then we go to the users and groups. And then we change the password of the account in question. First, you have to unlock it here. And by the way, this is uh, 10.9 uh, Mavericks. But again, we like to do things in the terminal. If we bring the terminal up, we just use the password command. So P-A-S-S-W-D, press enter, and it asks you for the old password. And then type in the new password. And retype the new password. And press enter. And no GNU's is good GNU's. Uh, now, one of the beautiful things here is it doesn't show what you're typing. It doesn't show anything but I can guarantee you that I typed it correctly because I never type things incorrectly. So getting back to reality, you know, we can change the password in Windows, we could change it in uh, Mac, we could change it in Android or iOS or in other versions of Linux or Unix or what have you, but you want it to be complex. And the key here is that we check the password. So one good way to do this is to go onto the internet and go to uh, some password checking programs online. Now these are not perfect. The criteria that they use and the math that they use behind this might not be perfect, but at least gives you a good idea of the strength of the password. So the first one here is the Microsoft uh, password checker. And we go to this field here and we type in the password. Now, for example, we could choose a couple different passwords. Let's start with one We'll call this Locrian pound sign. That's Locrian pound sign. And instead of an L, we're using the pipe sign as shown there. So pipe, O-C-R-I-A-N, pound sign. And this shows as medium. That's not very good. 
but it does have special characters, and it is um, eight characters long. However, this shows as a medium strength, so not really that great. Now, if we try another one, we'll try this is very secure, all one word, and the first letter is capitalized. So capital T, this is very secure. This shows as a strong password with the Microsoft password checker, which is okay. But what I really want is very strong. So let's go back and type the password that I had typed in the Windows command prompt, that marquee does had. And that's gonna be capital M A R Q U one S capital D three capital S zero D. Now notice what happens here. This still shows as medium. And this particular password has uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and uh, it looks like a pretty good password because of those complexity requirements. But uh, actually, the this is very secure password, which only had one capital, was considered more secure. And that's because it's a much longer password. It's uh, 6, 8, 14, 16 characters long. So length can be better when you're working within these uh, password checkers, but it all really depends on who's trying to crack the password and what program they're using. Uh, you might have better luck with one password than another uh, if, say, an attacker is using a brute force attack. But if they're using a dictionary attack, this is very secure, might not work so good. Even though it's a long password, it's using very commonly used words. So the best way is to take a, a phrase like that, but mix it up. For example, this is very secure, but typed capital T H I S one S capital V pound sign R Y capital S three C U R E. And now we're at best boom, very strong, hundred percent probably can't crack this. In fact, uh, except for the fact that this password is known because I use it in testing purposes, you're not going to be able to crack this password um, for the foreseeable future, regardless of whether you use a dictionary attack, a brute force attack, crypt analysis attack, whatever it is you're doing. Now, different password checkers will have different criteria, so you might get some different answers. For example, the password meter might give different responses. The first password we chose before was Locrian with a uh, pipe sign, O-C-R-I-A-N, pound sign. And that shows it as weak. So it's a little bit of a different answer there. Uh, however, if we go to our next password, which was Marquis de Sade, capital M-A-R-Q-U-1-S, capital D, three, capital S, zero D, it shows it as very strong. So the criteria here is going to be different. That password should be pretty good. It doesn't have special characters, but it should be a pretty good password. Microsoft doesn't like it. The password meter does. So you're going to get some different responses here. But again, to be on the safe side, go with that 15 characters or more, uppercase and lowercase, numbers, and the special characters. For example, that last password we did before. This is very secure with all the craziness. Uh, capital T H I S one S capital V pound sign R Y capital S three C U R E. Very strong, 100% powerful password. Both password checkers love that password. And so, you know, it goes to show you go with the 15 characters or more, the special characters the numbers, the uppercase letters, the lowercase letters, and uh, all together that makes a pretty complex and uncrackable password. There's some best practices. There's an older article here on Microsoft's uh, TechNet, some best practices for passwords. Uh, it's a pretty good article to read through, and this is in the uh, View Recommended Resources uh, PDF on the disk, but uh, you can see the link here. It's a pretty good uh, 
pretty good guy to go to. What this is basically telling you here is to use policies, define password policies. And that's the best thing to do because that's going to force your users to create complex passwords. Also, it'll enforce uh, a maximum password age and a minimum password length and so on. So you want to define those password policies, and we show that in one of the upcoming videos. So that's about it for passwords. Make sure you use a complex one. Make sure you know how to modify it on various operating systems and make sure that you use a policy.